Bitcoin is about to hit an all-time high, and one of the number one questions I'm getting right now is to do a deep dive into cryptocurrency, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk through in like a third grade level, what is blockchain, what is Bitcoin, conceptually understand it, then we'll walk through some of what the different coins are, and then how to purchase it, and what to look for, and how to store it. So many people are scared to get into Bitcoin because they feel like it's the unknown, and they have no idea what to do, and they've heard stories of people losing their coins, and getting their money stolen, and all this kind of stuff, and so I feel like there's a lot of fear to actually get into it. My goal is to break some of those down today so you can actually get access to an asset class that can serve you very well. So 10, 15 minutes, stay with me. This will be some of the best time ever. And I promise 10 years from now, you'll be thanking me. So what is blockchain, Bitcoin? What do all these terms mean? In 2008, we were going through the Great Recession and there was some guy, he calls himself Satoshi, thought that we needed to separate from these world powers and these government banks printing money and controlling the money currency. He was watching recessions happen and all this stuff happening because the Federal Reserve and other banks were printing money, inflating our money. And what happened is we allowed a man, a fallible person or government agency the ability to dictate our entire global money supply. This was causing massive issues. He didn't believe in this. And so what he did is he created a technology called a blockchain. It's an algorithm that takes away the need for a central agency or person to control it because we no longer need that. Right now, if I was to pay you something at a store, I'm likely gonna swipe a credit card or send you money from my bank or send a wire or write a check or do something. And we have to have a bank and a Federal Reserve say, this person paid this person, we track that dollar and it settles over here. That's why it often takes like three to four days for you to get your money. The blockchain's aim was to take a person or government out of it. Can we create a technology that's 100% unhackable, that is 100% transparent so that we don't need a government agency to do it, so that it gives the power back to the people and that's where the blockchain is and I'm gonna explain exactly what it is. Imagine from the beginning of time, if every single 10 minutes there was a ledger for every single dollar that was ever created or Bitcoin. So. We see Bitcoin number one traded hands from individual A to individual B. Bitcoin one traded hands from individual B to individual C. And we could number every single Bitcoin and every single person and create a ledger from the beginning of time of exactly everywhere it went. Every single 10 minutes, every transaction ever done on the Bitcoin network is compacted into a block or into a public ledger that everyone can read. We can go back to the beginning and inception of Bitcoin and track a single Bitcoin through everyone's hand from the beginning of time. Every 10 minutes, these blocks are connected. But what's cool is the last transaction on this block matches the first transaction on the next block of 10 minutes. So they link. Every single one of those blocks are nearly unhackable. I forgot how long it would take someone to hack an individual block, but it's something insane. But you can't just hack one block because if that block changes, they have to change the blocks on both sides of that because they link with the transactions. So in order to hack a blockchain, you have to hack every single block simultaneously at the exact same second. It's impossible, it can never be done. And that is why people say it is inhackable. But what happens is now we have a currency that can be tracked, is a public ledger. We don't need a government agency or a person to tell us this person's sending money and we have banks and wires and people are confirming stuff because it's all public and it takes away the complete ability for the government to regulate the money. They can't inflate it, they can't print more of it, they can't send us more in debt, they don't have to regulate it, we don't have to pay people to do it and it becomes a more efficient use of money. This is what the blockchain is. Now, I'm gonna give you another 60 seconds to start expanding your horizon of what the blockchain can really do because I think it's important for you to understand real use cases for this. I'm inside the real estate world, so I'm gonna use real estate as an example. When you close on a home for a refinance or a purchase or anything else, you have to print what's called a title report. That title report often will cost you $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. And what you're doing is you are paying a person inside a title company to go to the county records and look at every single contractor and lien and issue with that home from the beginning of time to make sure that there's no one that has put a lien on that property or did work on that property and wasn't paid so they can't try to claim that property from you. Imagine if those county records were put on the blockchain and every single home from the beginning of time is tracked. Every single repair, every single lien, every single mortgage, everything is tracked. You can tell when it was paid off, when it was completed, when it was satisfied. From the beginning of time, it was a public ledger. It can never be hacked, can never be changed, but it's a public ledger so that anyone can go check the history of the home that they're gonna move in. That instantaneously gets rid of title companies because now it is public information. You can just log onto a website, type in the address or identifier, it pulls up the property, and it's an inhackable ledger of everything that goes on. You just save $3,000 inside of every single real estate transaction in the entire country. 
country that is billions and billions of dollars. This technology can be applied to real estate, stocks, medical records, banks, money, everything can take this software and put it there. Anytime there's a middleman, it can completely replace it. So that's what the blockchain is, okay? We're gonna set that for aside for a second and talk specifically about Bitcoin and how to buy it and how it applies here. Inside of cryptocurrency, there's a bunch of different coins or there's a bunch of different technologies or companies that use the blockchain technology. For example, we use Bitcoin as the first one. That is kind of like a store of value. Think of it like gold or like US treasuries, sometimes dollars. It's a single use case as a store of value. But let's say someone else did this title one. I just gave you an example. There's people actually trying to do that right now. But let's say the title one is done. That could be title coin. Then it could be Ethereum, Bitcoin. All these different coins are just different iterations of this technology trying to solve a real world use case. I'm gonna give you a couple examples of coins just so that you can conceptually understand what's going on. Bitcoin's the easiest one. Bitcoin is the grandfather of them all. The blockchain was created for Bitcoin. Its purpose is to be a store of value. It is kind of the OG, if you will, of the cryptocurrency world. In my opinion, it's never gonna go away because it's so adopted and it's so big, but I do think it has a lot of room to grow. Ethereum is the second biggest coin. It's been around once again for a very long time. It is a company that uses this to do smart contracts. Instead of like tracking something publicly, you can put a contract on the blockchain and then give a bunch of if then statements saying, if the person pays me a dollar, release my version of the song to them. Bye bye iTunes. If the person gives me $100, release this painting to them. You've probably heard of NFTs. That blockchain is called Ethereum. Very, very popular. There are a lot of competitors to Ethereum, okay? If you were to ask my opinion, I actually don't own any Ethereum right now. Everything I own is in Bitcoin. Ethereum is technically the number two, which is why I wanna talk on it. But Solana and a bunch of other people are trying to compete with them to be the smart contract coin where you can put basically any contract on the blockchain. But there's a little bit more risk here because it does have competitors. The next kind of asset class, if you would, inside a cryptocurrency are called stable coins. These are very, very used. I don't love them, but they're important to understand. What's happened is basically people took the concept of a dollar, since we all think in dollars, and put it on the blockchain. And so they called it like, USD, like the United States dollar coin. So it's USDC is like the term for it, okay? Basically what it is, is to transaction cryptocurrency, you use the blockchain. It's harder to go from Bitcoin straight to cash because you're, you're crossing over a barrier back into the banking system. It's really easy to go from coin to coin though. And so they created this stable coin where it's one USDC is always equal to one dollar. So that way we can trade and add a Bitcoin and Ethereum into a stable coin. And that's what that is. As you get on, I promise this is gonna make more sense later, but as you get on different exchanges and stuff, you'll see USDT, USDC. It's a bunch of different stable coins and that's just there. It's not true US dollars, but they peg it to the dollar. So it's always equal to $1 so that you can transact inside of the cryptocurrency world a whole lot easier. Another kind of category and the last one I'm gonna to touch on is meme coins. Cryptocurrency is not regulated. That's one of the reasons there's so much opportunity in it, but that's also one of the reasons there's so much fraud in it and people hate it is because we don't have the SEC or any government regulating it. That's literally the purpose of it is to get rid of government agencies. But to stand up a cryptocurrency coin is really easy, okay? You can just copy code and roll it out there. And so there are quite literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of cryptocurrencies out there. And a bunch of them are just shell companies that are absolutely worthless. A lot of them like Dogecoin, very popular. Elon Musk loves it. It's now actually getting some traction, but originally was just a meme coin. The problem with meme coins is there are a lot of pump and dump schemes, meaning they'll blast it on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere. Tons of people will make a whole lot of money. And then people with really big holdings of it sell everything and everyone loses a ton of money. And it creates this system that's very toxic, not healthy for cryptocurrency as a whole. And so I would avoid those at all costs. If you are hearing about some new up and coming coin, stay away from it. Likely you are part of the scheme trying to raise the price up so that someone can make a whole lot of money and you're gonna be the one losing a ton of money as a result. Next section is how to actually invest in cryptocurrency. I'm gonna use Coinbase as an example, just because it's the one I use, it's probably the biggest regulated and like well-known one inside the United States. There are others, do your own research, but it's the one we're gonna use for this example. So inside of Coinbase, you're gonna set up an account. Make sure to set up two-factor authentication with this account. You're going to be putting money inside of this account and like anything you want to make sure this is very secure. So username, password, email, text a code that expires within 60 seconds. Hopefully most of you know what that is. Make sure to set it up. I actually think they require you to do it now. 
Hopefully they do. If not, make sure to toggle it on. When you go into Coinbase, it's gonna allow you, it's very user-friendly, guys, okay? If you are scared to purchase, don't be, because Coinbase is gonna force you down a funnel that's very, very easy to do. You're gonna hop on Coinbase, create an account. When you get there, it's gonna encourage you to link a bank account. This is what you're gonna have to do to get dollars onto the exchange. I don't know if you've ever used Robinhood or Vanguard or Fidelity. It's very, very similar, okay? You're gonna put in your banking credentials, routing number, account number, bank, and you can ACH, you can wire, you can do a bunch of different stuff to get money into Coinbase. Once money is inside of Coinbase, you're gonna hit the button that says buy BTC. It's gonna pop up a graph and you get to choose the price at which you buy Bitcoin. The easiest way is just to mark it by, basically saying whatever the price of Bitcoin is today, I'm willing to purchase it. I wanna buy X amount of dollars. You're gonna put the dollars in. I wanna buy $100 of Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin right now is $70,000 purchase. Now inside your account, it's going to show you the percent of Bitcoin you have. If you buy a hundred dollars and the price is 70,000, you're going to have like 0 0.001 Bitcoins. Okay. It goes a lot of decimals down. That Bitcoin is going to be stored in what they call a cryptocurrency or a Bitcoin wallet. Coinbase on your behalf opens up and creates a wallet for you. When you create an account, you have a wallet. Coinbase is so secure. I keep actually quite a bit of my cryptocurrency on Coinbase. Probably shouldn't say that publicly. I do have a hardware wallet. I do transfer a lot off, but as I'm like trading and buying Bitcoin, I will accumulate it on there before I send it off. Not the most secure, but not terrible. The other option you have is rather than Coinbase setting up a wallet for you that your Bitcoin sits in, you can create your own wallet. It's called cold storage or a cold wallet or a hardware wallet. There's a lot of different names for it. You can go YouTube. I'm not gonna walk you through exactly how to do it today, but think Think of it like a USB drive that is your personal wallet. And as long as you have that USB drive and a password in your head, you can access that Bitcoin anywhere. You could go from Venezuela to Canada, take that little hardware wallet with you, plug it into computer and you instantaneously have money. Government regulatories, boundaries, borders, does not matter. When it's your key, your hardware wallet, you can access it wherever you want. And that's what crypto enthusiasts love. And that's why they encourage it so much. It takes away the risk of it ever being lost or stolen or fraud or anything like that. And you can take it wherever you go. Those are the two ways to store it. You can either store it just on the exchange like you would a stock on Robinhood, or you can take it off through your own wallet or storage. You can go do some research there, but that's just the difference between the two. To start out, if you're buying hundred dollars, I personally do your own research, but I personally would just leave it on Coinbase. It's very very, very simple, happens automatically. It's a hundred bucks, it's probably not gonna kill you if anything did happen, but I highly doubt it does. Side note here, Bitcoin's at near all time high right now. Make sure you dollar cost average on your way in and your way out if you ever wanna sell. You don't wanna throw all your money in when you hear about it in the news because it's hitting an all time high. I would create a regular cadence of investing inside a cryptocurrency if this is what you decide to do. If you decide you wanna put $50 of every paycheck in just every two weeks, you can set it up in Coinbase. It's very easy, it's an auto deposit. Click the button, it'll walk you through it and it will just pull from your account every two weeks, 50 bucks. So as your paycheck comes in, it continues to invest. This will dollar cost average you into Bitcoin and make it very, very easy and give you an average entry point rather than just throwing it all in at an all time high. Last, just kind of couple points. We've taught you all the way from what blockchain is to what Bitcoin is, where the different coins are, how to actually purchase it. We've made a lot of progress. Hopefully you don't just listen to this and you actually take action because that's what will actually make you money. The last thing that you need to be aware Cryptocurrency is an investment. There are gonna be, if you make money, there are gonna be tax implications that you need to be aware of and you have to report this on your income taxes. So I'm not gonna go dive into that. I'm not a CPA, I'm not an investment advisor, I'm not a financial advisor. So just make sure that you play by the rules. It's not that hard, your accountant can do it, but just be aware that like, you can't just forget you did this and not report it. Hopefully this was helpful. I really want more people to conceptually understand what cryptocurrency is. If you ever have any questions with it, the easiest way to reach me is inside my DMs on Instagram. We try to answer every single DM every single day. Sometimes it takes us a little bit to get to them because we get hundreds and hundreds in. But shoot me a DM, would love to help you. And as always, if you need more, we have hours and hours of content inside our Amplify community. It's where I teach all these like little 90 second clips on social media, 10 minute clips on YouTube. We put hours and hours of content content in there to teach people how to invest the right proportions. I put my portfolio out there, everything like that. So join the Amplify community and then let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or what you want to see in the next video so that we can always be helping you grow your net worth.